let's talk tariffs. <laughs> this seems to be like a hot topic for some reason. It's also extremely polarized. I did not think that Democrats and Republicans could be so different in discussing tariffs, but I guess that makes sense. So today I'm going to talk about tariffs, this Trump 25% tariff thing, the good and the bad, because I think we're villainizing tariffs for no f***ing reason, but let's get into it. So I think by now we understand what a tariff is. It's a tax essentially on imported exported goods. So I am gonna leave a link in the description for a video by Legal Eagle. I love his channel. He's a little left leaning. So some of the things that he says are a little bit biased. He also doesn't understand certain things that I thought were pretty obvious um, as it relates to like national security, which I'm gonna get into because that is a part of this. But uh, it's a great video, very informative. It goes through the history of tariffs and why it could potentially be really bad. But with that being said, we all know what tariffs are. They are a tax essentially on imports and exports. But I think what we're, we're missing the point here. Now, Trump did this during his uh, first administration where he threatened tariffs. And I think that's what he's doing now. These threats are good and bad. One, they make corporations can reconsider buying their goods from the countries that Trump is, is threatening. But also it kind of hopefully shifts their eye to domestic. Um, domestic products. And that's not always the case because we have CEOs like this AutoZone CEO who was like, hey, the second you guys mention tariffs, we hike our prices up. So that's also not good considering it was just a threat. Nothing has actually been done yet. The other thing is these big companies don't necessarily shift their eyes to domestic products, right? They were like, okay, well, if you can't buy from China, we'll buy from Brazil. Like it doesn't really work in the way that Trump thinks it's going to work. Now, it doesn't work that way, kiddo. You he threatened a blanket tariff saying that imports and exports and whatever tariffs are just going to be this flat rate. And that's not really very good either, right? Because when we think of tariffs, we think of very specific tariffs. Like for example, we get Canadian lumber. Canadian lumber, that specific industry from a specific country was like a little over 8%. The Biden administration raised the Canadian lumber tariff to 14.84%, I believe. So almost doubling it. That's a very specific tariff. Now, these are non-agricultural tariffs, meaning food that comes in and out of the country shouldn't have any sort of tariffs associated with it. It's industrial tariffs that we're talking about. So we saw this with the electric vehicles, raising tariffs, but we essentially weaponized the tariffs at that point. And by weaponizing, I mean they are targeted, meaning we're saying that we're going to tariff everything coming into the country from China because we don't want to give China any more money. There are some economists out there who think that because there is a trade deficit, meaning we are taking in more than we are putting out, that we're basically giving China first place in whatever global war we think is coming. That is essentially what these targeted tariffs are for. We are weaponizing tariffs. Same thing with the AI chips. We're putting a huge astronomical tariff because we want to protect our information and we don't want to help China strengthen their military, even though... They have been doing that. I'll leave a video, a link in the description for a video by uh, Andrew Bustamante on the Resilient Podcast, uh, where he basically explains how we were off in the sandbox fighting a random ass war. China was building its economy and boosting its military because they had no part of it, right? They were using that time to make their country, to build up their country, whereas we were shipping all of our shit to the Middle East. So it is my opinion, and I personally think, that Trump is threatening these tariffs because he wants businesses to start looking inward. He wants them to start looking at domestic products. And I can agree with that. I can understand why we want to be a little bit more self-sufficient as a nation. But tariffs, you know, they bring in, tariffs are paid directly to the government. So it's supposed to boost the GDP, reduce our deficit, which we've seen. I don't know, people always like, I'm, I'm, I'm usually right in the middle, right? I have some conservative views. I have some liberal views. I'm right down the middle. Now, I'm going to say this. The Trump administration, they announced all these crazy policies that everybody like villainized. But those policies were kept during the Biden administration. He like renamed some of them. Hey, it was no big whoop to Mr. Trump. But the same thing with Obama. Trump attacked Obama, but he kept a majority of his policies. Why? Because it worked. So now he's ruffling some feathers. But... He's using, this, he's using this negative reinforcement, which is never going to work in the business industry, which is another thing I don't really understand because his cronies, his homeboys are all multi-billionaires. So it's like, like you didn't sit down when you guys are out playing golf, Mario Lago? Like you guys, you didn't mention this to them? Like, what's the game plan here? What's the game plan, Kevin? It was a nice run, Kev. 
So negative reinforcement is never going to work in the business industry. You need positive reinforcement, meaning incentivize domestic products. Because what's going to happen? So instead of buying our products from China, we buy it from Brazil. So China, let's say AutoZone, is, going to, is buying filters from China for five bucks. And you say, we're going to throw a tariff on it. So now maybe that same oil filter from China is going to cost AutoZone $7 after the tariffs. And China, you know, AutoZone's like, hold the f*** on. We're going to buy our oil filters from Brazil for $6. So the cost still goes up exponentially to the final, to the end consumer. But then domestic products need to be like, yo, why are we selling our shit for five fifty when we can be selling it for 6 bucks like Brazil? So everything goes up. You do not need to do any math. Whereas if you incentivized positive reinforcement for these businesses and say, hey, listen, we'll give you tax breaks or whatever if you buy domestically and we tell domestic companies, hey, you keep as much as you can in-house and reduce as much raw products you have to import, you also get, you know, tax break or whatever, right? You know, giving out a tax break, you get a tax break, you get a tax break. The tax break will be huge. But it's positive reinforcement. You are incentivizing buying domestically rather than, you know, punishing them for buying outside. Because at the end of the day, that rolls down. Just because AutoZone's price went up $2 doesn't mean you pay $2 more. They go off of profit margins, which is a percentage. So for you, it gets exponentially more expensive. Yeah, AutoZone might have to pay $7, but they make a 30% profit margin. So by the time it gets to you, you are paying, instead of paying the $6.50 you were paying on that oil filter, you're now paying $9. Meanwhile, AutoZone only ate two bucks. You're eating three. So it's like, that's the discrepancy. And that's kind of what the legal eagle explains when he goes through like how tariffs actually affect the end consumer and how too many tariffs and weaponizing too many tariffs, how it led to a economic depression in this country was the over weaponization of tariffs. Blanket tariffs don't make sense. It needs to be targeted. Now you can get into a little bit of a trade war, which is kind of what happened with the aluminum steel coming from coming in from Mexico or the Trump administration kind of weaponized tariffs for that. And the World Trade Organization said, hey, you are in violation of the Fair Trade Act. So we were like, kind of had to walk away with our tail tucked. So when you are strategically weaponizing tariffs, you have to do a little bit more than that, especially when it comes to non-industrial goods. If it was me, I would say a blanket tariff for everything is fine. But the key thing to consider here is 50% of the products that we import and export are not, there's no tariffs associated with them at all. So instead of having a 15% tariff on lumber, if you just had a 2% tariff on everything, it would even out. And now the lumber industry is not having to pay as much to bring in, to bring in lumber from Canada or steel from overseas, which we kind of don't really export. We don't really import that. We usually export that, but That's kind of the only way I can see a blanket tariff working is if it's the same but lower for the industries that are currently or the products that are currently being tariffed. The last thing here is I really do think this is just a threat. I think I don't know what his game plan is or who he's talking to, but if he's talking to his billionaire cronies, they're only going to do what's in the best interest of their billions. So the last thing I would say is that we are never going to boost the economy if we're doing it from the top up. Unlike some physics laws, this trickle down is not a thing. It needs to trickle up. So if we are trying to boost the economy and help the average Joe, the middle class American, which the highest points in our economic history have been with a strong middle class. So if we are trying to help the middle class, help the middle class. Well, Carl thinks that democracy is the reason why the middle class is so mediocre, that it just naturally tends toward the middle, toward mediocrity. Don't help the big dogs or the lower dogs. Help the middle class, give the middle class the tax breaks, incentivize the middle class, create jobs to create more of a middle class, right? Bring the lower income individuals up by giving them employment or giving them resources, giving anything that that they need to have them become tax paying middle class. That is how you boost the economy. You also boost the economy by not giving blanket tariffs. You incentivize buying locally through whatever means necessary and direct people's focus to industries here. Not only was that going to help the small business or the mid business, middle sized business, you know, uh, in, increase their overall revenue and profit, but they're going to expand. They're going to hire more. We're going to have more jobs. And this cycle 
It doesn't have to be a negative cycle. It can be a positive cycle. And yes, there are a ton of things that I'm leaving out and there's going to be some internet economist who's going to come in here and say, well, what about this? And yeah, what about that? You might be right. The what aboutism is a great thing. We can get into that conversation, but I'm not necessarily talking out of my ass here. I have a master's and a doctorate in business and I've learned, I've spent a lot of time learning how to run businesses. I run my own businesses and that is the only way that I can see this working. Lowering tariffs overall, but giving a blanket like 2% tariff, which in my opinion is probably like the last case scenario, or you can pair that with directing big corporations' attention to domestic products by incentivizing them through positive reinforcement, not empty threats. So with that, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely leave them in the comments, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Mm -hmm.